How do I copy text from a copy protected website? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button. And if at the end of the video you find it was interesting and helpful, make sure and hit that thumbs up. That really does help everybody else on YouTube find the answers they're looking for when they search across YouTube. Here's today's question. How do I copy paste from sites that don't permit it? There is info on a site I'd like to save, but they don't permit copy pasting. Is there any way around that? Well, as you might expect, the website is trying to protect itself from copy theft. Uh, they want to make sure that the only place you can get their content is on their site. Uh, they have the copyright to their content. They have the, certainly they have the right to try and protect it. Now, today's video is not so much about all the different ways you can get around that because you can, but it's really more about pointing out to content producers one very fundamental rule about publishing in a digital world. And that is simply this. If it can be seen, it can be copied. Let's have a look at some of the common ways that that might happen. So what we're looking at right now is actually this very article on uh, Ask Leo. If we scroll down here to some of the content that's in the article. Now, to be clear, um, Ask Leo is not copy protected. So if you make a selection and you go right click, you can in fact copy it to the clipboard without a problem. Let's assume for a moment, however, that for whatever reason, I do have copy protection turned on. We're going to look at several different ways to potentially copy the text that you're interested in copying. So there are a couple of what I'll call above board techniques. These are techniques that don't involve doing anything, well, hacky, if you will. One is to simply print it to PDF. So I'm hitting Control P to fire up the print dialog. And you can see that I've actually got Microsoft Print to PDF selected. If I now print this and save it to a file, and I now go open that file, you can see that in fact, we've got the document in a PDF. We've essentially made a copy of it in one in a very real sense. For a lot of different solutions, for a lot of different things that people are attempting to do, this is actually enough. It's a way to save the article or save the content from that website into a format that you can use later. Now, as a side effect, it is also possible that the, that the PDF itself with the right tools might be something that you can select and copy and paste from within. In this case, that doesn't seem to be the case, but notice that I am using the default Edge Adobe PDF Viewer. If, for example, I had Adobe Acrobat installed, it's very possible that I would be able to copy and paste the selected text from within the PDF Viewer. Another approach is to use file save as. Now this doesn't work on every web page because many of the pages are very complicated. It doesn't seem to work well on Ask Leo pages, for example, when the advertising is present. But it's normally under the ellipsis menu and more tools save page as in Chrome. You may find it in a file menu depending on what browser you're running or you may be able to right click on your content and say save as. The net result will be a .html page that contains all of the content that is then saved to your disk. The net result of downloading an HTML page, of course, would be to have the actual source code to the file or the page on your computer. Another approach that is perhaps a little bit faster and easier and certainly more reliable is to right click on the uh, content and click on view page source. Again, different browsers may show this in different places, but for the most part, right click and view source is the way to get to it. This will actually reload the page in a different window and show you the source code. This is the icky nitty gritty HTML that is behind the page you're looking at. Now, the trick here is that, yes, there's a lot of stuff here that you don't care about, that you don't want to see. If you want to find the source code to the actual text that's on the page that you're trying to copy, you can simply use find. For example, if I do a control F 
and look for above board, you'll see that this has gotten to above board techniques. If we take a look at the original page, that's actually the section that I'm talking about right now, above board techniques for getting at the text you want to copy out. And if we look below that, you'll see that yes, there is HTML here, there is the image that's part of this, but right below that is in fact all of the text that we're talking about. And again, you can now in this window, copy and paste that text out to somewhere else. You are going to have to clean up the HTML to use it for something else, or maybe you want it as HTML, that's up to you. But the bottom line is that the text can absolutely be copied out of the view HTML window. That's generally the technique that I end up using once websites tend to get a little bit more uh, aggressive about trying to copy their content. There are two other techniques that I'm not going to show here, but I at least want to mention. One is to disable JavaScript. You can do it in Chrome and other browsers, but honestly, it's easiest to do in Firefox by installing the NoScript extension. The reason disabling NoScript can sometimes help is that it is sometimes a JavaScript function that prevents copying. If you disable JavaScript, you've disabled this disabling of copying. In other words, you've re-enabled the ability to copy out. The same thing is true for CSS. CSS is a little bit more difficult to play with, but for example, in Firefox, you can click on the View menu, Page Style, and then click on No Style. The page will actually get re-rendered without CSS, and the result, while being pretty ugly, should be copy-pastable. Now, depending on these techniques that have been used to make the text uncopyable or to make it harder for the text to be copyable, there are two other approaches. One is to grab your camera, take a picture of the page. You've just copied the text. You can now use that image depending on the quality that you have. It may be enough. You can take a screenshot. Uh, that's something that we can do here with print screen. I'm going to use Windows print screen here. So what we've just done is we've created a screenshot that has gone into my OneDrive pictures screenshots folder. And if we actually open that up, sure enough, it's a screenshot of exactly what we were looking at. We have effectively copied that text into an image. Now there are different approaches. If you've got a long piece of text, you can have multiple images. You can reduce the font size on this window by going control minus, which actually causes more of the text to be included in the page. Or you can simply use multiple images to grab the text that you want to grab. Once you've got an image, be it a photograph that you've taken or a screenshot, you can then use what's called OCR or optical character recognition. OCR tools take an image of a page and then turn that back into editable text. There are techniques using OneNote. There are techniques using Google Docs. There are techniques using dedicated OCR software. But the bottom line is that once you've got an image of the text, you can in fact run OCR on it to get the text you wanted copy. And finally, there's one that I actually didn't mention in the article, but one of the things I just did here was a screenshot. It is possible for the web page to actually disable the ability to take a screenshot. There's a way around that. That is actually a little bit more work, but what you end up doing is doing a remote desktop session to the machine that's viewing the text you want to copy. That remote desktop session can then be screenshotted and that will work to grab a copy of whatever it is that remote desktop session is looking at, which could be the web page you're trying to copy. 
So I've alluded to a lot of different techniques that can be used to copy the text out of a web page. These same techniques and variations thereof can be used to copy text, they can be used to copy audio, they can be used to copy uh, even video if you want to use screen recording software instead of things like uh, simple screenshots. The bottom line, and like I said, this is mostly for content creators, is you need to understand that when you place copy restrictions on the information that you publish online or digitally, all you're really doing is making it difficult to copy, not impossible. If someone is sufficiently motivated, there are ways to copy just about anything that can be seen. Again, there may be some work involved, but if the content is valuable enough, if the person who wants it is motivated enough, there are absolutely ways to do it. All you've really done by adding copy protection to a lot of the different copy that you've placed online or in digital form is you've inconvenienced the honest people. My real point here is that most copy protection schemes are futile and using copy protection actually only makes it harder for the innocent people, your real customers, your honest customers, to access your content. For the original article on which this video is based, for updates, for links, for comments, visit askleo.com slash 4360. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.